Hi everyone, welcome back. As uh, my regular subscribers know, in the last couple of videos, we actually talked about uh, subword tokenization, very important concept for you to understand if you want to use large language models and if you want to train them from scratch and so on. And in the last video, I actually talked about how you can actually train your own model from scratch. And for that, we used GPT-2 model because that was the only one that was available for us to download and train from scratch. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you don't want to train these things from scratch and uh, I'm pretty sure you want to train it on a bunch of documents that you have and just work on those documents. If that is the case, then OpenAI, a combination of OpenAI and Langchain are going to make our lives easy, and this tutorial is exactly about that. I know you love my videos, and that's why I request you to go ahead and pause the video right now, hit the subscribe button, and while you're there, you'll see the little thanks button right next to it. If you're feeling generous, go ahead and click on it. Okay, with that information, I think uh, we are almost ready to jump into the process. I am going to show you quite a bit. I'm going to show you, walk you through the process of actually uh, using your conda to create an environment for a specific Python, completely starting from scratch. Well, I assume you have conda. If not, go ahead and download Anaconda for Python and go ahead and install that. It comes with you know, the IDE that you probably need and it comes with uh, the Conda environment and everything. So assuming you have that, we will install the you know, required py uh, Python and then all the required libraries and we'll probably make some mistakes along the way. We learn as we go along, but what are we trying to build? We are trying to actually build something using OpenAI. That means you need to pay to get OpenAI API access. It's cheap. You just give it a credit card and then it's, uh, it depends on how many API calls you make. I mean, I, I've been using it for two, three days and I think I spent $2 or something. Uh, so it depends on how many times you call. I did try doing something like this with like the free models. The experience is not the same, guys. I mean, for practice purposes, go ahead and do that. But OpenAI, actually, that's the best. And that's why I'm doing this video with OpenAI. So you do, that's the only thing that you need to pay for. Yeah, OpenAI API. Let's assume you have it. Or let's assume you found something that gives you free API access. I don't know what that is, a reliable one without any issues. So if that's the case, then probably you can follow the process. But I'm going to use OpenAI. Okay. Only a few lines of code where you say, hey, here are my documents, my PDFs, text, whatever, word files. Train it, and I'm going to ask questions. And the answers must only come from here. I don't care if you are a big language model. I want answers only from my documents. That's one thing that we are going to do. Now, the next step is, OK, I also want to deploy this as an app locally using Flask. So you create this application using Flask. I've done a, a few videos in the past. And finally, let's actually use Streamlit, which makes this creation of this local app much more easy compared to Flask, although I should say Flask is a bit more scalable compared to the others. OK, with that information, let's go ahead and jump in. Again, like I said, we are going to work with first a command line interface uh, in Conda to get our system ready and then jump into uh, an IDE. OK, so uh, here is my desktop. And first thing first, let's go ahead and Conda create an environment. I'm going to call this custom chat and Python 3.10, uh, let's do 3.9 because it's, it's, I find it more reliable, so 3.9. I haven't used 10 a lot. Let's say yes, let's go ahead and install it. I'll try to speed up relevant parts of this uh, video if it's uh, slow, but uh, first let's focus. Okay, let's do conda and list to see if we have our uh, environment listed. Uh, custom chat, yep. Okay, we're all good. Now we need to activate that. Conda activate custom chat. And there you go. Let's clear the screen. Okay, now let's uh, start installing by Langchain because that's the primary library. So pip install Langchain. And while it's installing, I should mention, yeah, I'll probably forward some parts of this. Okay, there you go, it's done. 
and uh, that was pretty fast let's see python and let's see import uh, yeah let's import lang chain uh, oh good that's a good sign let's see what the version is so you know exactly what i'm working with version and it's 0 .0 0.0.165 okay so let's go ahead and quit and continue with our other libraries clear the screen okay what shall we install next let's go ahead and pip install pi pdf because i want to read pdf files so let's install pi pdf2 and uh, what next i should have written this down guys uh, pip install um, um okay let's do python uh, what is it called dot n and this is uh, I want to save my API key in a dot env file and dot n helps us in kind of reading reading that that dot env file that's pretty much it so it's a pretty short, small installation okay pip install uh, let's do this files library this is by meta uh, guys oh could not find it. okay we'll get to this later but this is needed to compare two embeddings so we know, uh, yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that. Okay, let's install pip install flask because we want to deploy a flask app. And remember, f is uh, uppercase in flask. Okay, now what do we do? Uh, let's install pip install, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, yeah, streamlet because we want to use streamlet um, uh, as an alternative to flask, a better alternative to flask if it's a small application uh that's going fast so good mm -hmm. <coughs> okay so that is good my screen is looking very busy let's see what happens uh um, let's take care of our files. I just Google searched for files, F-A-I-S-S. -S. Uh, okay, Karna install. Oh, I just did F-A-I-S-S. -S. I either need to do CPU or GPU. And here it says CUDA Toolkit 10.2. What CUDA do I have? Uh, and VCC version, I have 11.0. Okay, let's see if this works, yeah? So 11.0, now let's copy the, what is it, conda install, oh, there you go, <laughs> conda install PyTorch 10.2, 10.2, let's change the 10.2 to 11.0. Oh, I hope this works, otherwise we'll have to install CPU, but let's see. Okay, well, it's done. I don't know if it's done done or if it's done we'll get to it in a second once we uh, the following packages are not available oh um okay <laughs> cpu okay let's do apparently 11.0 is not available um so i don't want to research while i'm recording a video or although i should have researched it beforehand but cpu is good that's the advantage right i mean in this case cpu is fine Okay, so that's a good sign. That's a good sign. So everything seems to be installed. Uh, let's make sure I have this line of code that actually imports uh, a few libraries. So let's run it. Oh God, what's going on now? Okay, cares. Oh, I saw this before. Let's uh, um, pip install. Carset normalizer 310. Yeah, I copied it. I copied this in a different uh, text file. So it's ah oh, error. Mm. using user option okay let's do user I, I i i apologize if you find this to be slow uh but in case you run into these errors now you know how to fix it okay there you go it gave a warning but i think in general it seems to be um fine and it says add this to path let's see if this works otherwise we'll do something cannot import well we didn't restart the 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 kernel sorry wow, losing words here okay let's do that okay now let's run it voila okay that's good so this one imports a few libraries so once i run this line i know that okay uh, i i guess i'm in uh, i'm good so let's just do open ai did we install it 
No. Oh, I thought I installed it right after Langchain because that's how I I recommend. Okay, let's go ahead and do it from here. Open it. You can do it from Conda environment if you want, but let's install it from here. Okay, good. You may need to restart the kernel. Yep, let's do that. It's always a good idea. Oh, by the way, I'm using the Spider IDE. Yes, I mean that's comes standard with uh, uh, Anaconda. I have no particular affinity towards any of these but this one's okay uh, let's install tick token uh, helps with tokenizers i think uh, again i'm using this because in the past i got an error uh, about this one now uh, when i run one of these lines so i'm i'm just using this i'll, I'll, I'll provide a list uh, as part of the description okay now let me think what do we need to do now uh, yeah secret key so go to openai uh, slash api keys go ahead and sign up blah 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 create a new security key and copy the key and uh, look at uh, the billing uh, let's go to usage i think in the last few days i've used uh, yeah le less than two bucks so i don't know what your economic situation is but usually for education purposes that's not a lot of money so i copied this just now uh, you guys didn't see it <laughs> but I copied it on a different screen. Now let's go ahead. Normally I would put this in this .env file. I'll just show you the template, how it looks like. There you go. All it's basically is openai underscore api underscore key. And this is where you paste your key. This is just A, B, C, D, E, F like I just put, but the key looks somewhat like that. Okay, so now I think uh, you got the point. So make sure that you put your API key in the .env. Of course, we'll go through this code in a minute, but so far, what did we see? Uh, we just looked at uh, how you can put things in .env. That's pretty much it, okay? So now let's go ahead. And by the way, I just uh, I just organized this as basic implementation, Flask, and then Streamlit app. Yeah. So I'm just I'll share all the code. Look at the look at the link below. So in .env I have my API key, and I am going to use uh, .env. Right. We installed that to load .env and then read the read the environment from that file. Okay. Now. Uh, I have this junglebook.pdf right there, but my training files, I actually, let's go ahead and dump junglebook in training files. So we have one PDF, one TXT. It can be PDF, TXT, Word, whatever you want. Go ahead and dump all the books that you would like to train it on. So our goal is to train it on these two books and ask questions from any of these, and then it should give us uh, decent answers, I hope. So let's go ahead and jump in to the code. Let me zoom in one more a bit. Uh, where's my keyboard? Okay, one more bit, so it's visible for those of you watching this uh, at um, on a on a on your phones. Okay, few lines of code, like I promised. In fact, you can ignore all of this if you only work with like text files or PDF files. All this is basically to just read a file, and I'll show go through that in a minute. But let's go ahead and start with importing the right libraries dot n we installed that and os py pdf2 because one of the ways we read files is using pdf i also uh, go ahead and install python docx i did not show that on this screen but i've installed that already so import docx to read word files and all of these are from langchain you need character text splitter so you're splitting your text uh, and openai embeddings faiss is by uh, meta uh, meta AI and that is the one that helps us in comparing two different embeddings but embeddings once you divide this text into into individual sentences then you're converting that sentence into an embedding which is nothing but a vector and that vector will be compared like your question for example is a vector that will be compared against all the other vectors embeddings that you have in your text and FAISS is a way of comparing that yeah so that's what we are using over there uh, uh, QA chain in large language models. We are going to o use OpenAI. They have a few others, but OpenAI is the one that I tested. It works, so I'm going to use that. Okay, so uh, using all of these, uh, I don't think I'm using this callbacks thing. So let's go ahead and delete that line so we don't confuse things uh, a bit further. So all of these, and uh, let's actually. Uh, oh, I should have. Uh, um, let's clear and let's make sure our working directory is where we want it to be okay so great let me clear this again i want to make sure because i want to run line by line 
and it knows where we are. Okay, so all of these, let's go ahead and run it. And then we are going to import the dot env. And now, so this is as basic as it gets. So the first function is to read PDF with open uh, that file name. You extract the text and go ahead and concatenate the text from all the pages and then return text. That's it. And this function is exactly the same with read uh, with the word files. And this is just a ordinary text file. So that's it. So these are the functions. And now the next one is, OK, if the file name is PDF, go ahead and get the text. If it is doc, go ahead and get it. If it is text, go ahead and concatenate all of these because I may have multiple uh, multiple uh, documents in my directory that I'm pointing here and give me the combined text. That's what this one is. So let's go ahead and run that. So far, I hope you feel comfortable. Now let's point it to the train directory where our training files are. So that's the directory over there. And now let's go ahead and read the text. And we are for to reading the text, we are calling this read documents from directory function. So it may take a while because we have two large texts. And uh, while it's doing that, it shouldn't be that. Uh, uh, this is Jungle Book, the entire Jungle Book uh, textbook. Well, <laughs> the book, the novel, and the Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide. I hope uh, you read this book or both of these. They're pretty uh, amazing books. And Hitchhikers is also a pretty amazing movie. OK, so we got our uh, text there. So in the text, we have that. That, that is the st size uh, of the text. OK. So now let's go ahead and split our text into chunks because you cannot just load the entire text into one embedding. We need to divide that into multiple embeddings and uh, we are going to use character text splitter and it splits it whatever character we are defining here like new line and the chunk size is 1000. So let's take divide our text into the size of 1000 chunks. Uh, uh, size of 1000 and then there is an overlap of 200 between these chunks and that's exactly what this function does and let's go ahead and do this and it helps us why are we doing that because now we can actually convert that into embeddings once you convert this uh, split this text so we just defined the character text splitter object now we need to apply that onto our text so we get the chunks of text until now the check text is a string of how many is this 2.4 million. Okay, we need to divide that into thousands with an overlap of 200. So let's go ahead and do that. And now if you look at text chunks here, we have 3000 uh, chunks of text right there. And each chunk is size 1000. So about 3 million. Why 3 million? Because we have an overlap of 200. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So now we have our chunks of text. You see how the chunk of text shows up right there so go ahead and print and study it if you want but now let's go ahead and import our embeddings we are going to use openai embeddings that we imported uh, earlier openai embeddings right there from a lang chain embeddings and openai and we are going to convert our text into this embedding very simple process you read your text, divide the text into chunks, and then convert that into some sort of an embedding, and then once, uh, and then use your FAAI from text chunks and uh, create a doc search object right there. This may take, uh, this may, <laughs> this will take a while, yeah, uh, not while while, not hours and hours, but a few, uh, a few seconds, almost up to a minute, I would say. OK, so this doc search thing is done and uh, it should be an object up here uh, of the vector stores. Again, um, yeah, I don't want to uh, get into a tangential topic talking about vector stores. But yeah, there is a doc search object right here. Now we can actually use this to perform a similarity search between between the embeddings that we have done. Yeah. By the way, we are going to use this embeddings uh as part of uh, right here right I'm not arguing to we have used that okay now we need to define our language model like i said we need to use open ai if i run this line it should go ahead and run it uh, and if i run this line it should also go ahead and run it otherwise by now it would have given me a message saying that hey you don't have enough api uh calls you know enough enough uh, money for your api or something of that sort but now that it knows my environment, it knows my API key, it's it's working fine. OK, so far, what did we do? Nothing. We just loaded our text, divide the text into chunks, 
converted those chunks into uh, you know F A A I S S from this text from these chunks, and we created an object called doc search. Now from now on, whenever we run this search, it's going to run only on this doc search because it has embeddings. How many embeddings does it have? 3,034. And when we do a search, it's going to search against this 3,034 and try to get us the answer from these from these embeddings. Okay, that's that's how simple it is. And for that, we are going to use large language model from OpenAI, and uh, we have uh, we created this uh, QA chain from uh, uh, Lang chain. <laughs> too many chains, too many languages. Okay, with this language model. Now let's ask some questions. So uh, uh, we trained it on a couple of documents, right? So we trained it on uh, Jungle Book and we also trained it on uh, the Hitchhiker's uh, Guide to the Galaxy. So let's actually ask it, uh, I thought, uh, what is the significance of 42? But it, if I already give it the answer, that's not fun. So let's not ask uh, that question. Let's ask, what is the answer to life's ultimate question? And let's see what it does. So that is my query. That's just the text. And now we need to perform a doc search, similarity search using this query. So what it does is it converts this into the embeddings that it can recognize, relate to, and convert, compare that embedding with the doc search, right? With all the embeddings that we have as part of here. So let's go ahead and perform that search. And now you got an answer. And the response is basically you're running your chain on the input documents equals to docs. And your question is, what is the query? Basically, it's pulling all the documents. So let's understand. The docs is a list of uh, four documents right there. Let's open this. This is, the, this is the advantage of uh, the IDE that I'm using, the spider. So you can interact with the variables. You can see what's going on and everything. So it's got like four of these docs basically saying that, okay, so the answer contains, uh, these are the relevant ones, you know, uh, from our embeddings that can help us with the uh, answering the query. So now that you have the subset of all the doc search, where you have the answer. Now we are going to just say, hey, chain.run, my input document is docs, and the question that we are trying to ask is the query that we have up here, and this is the response. Response is basically, what, why running this chain in lang chain, what is the response that we are going to get? So we already get uh, a response, so let's go ahead and print both query and the response, and you see right there, what is the answer to life's ultimate question? It says 42. Um, Let's also ask, uh, I think we did uh, Jungle Book, right? So who are the main characters in Jungle Book? Okay, let's ask this question and see what it says. Who are the main characters? We trained it on two documents. So let's go ahead and print the response. Every time I do this, it's costing me two cents or something. Yeah, but that's fine. Uh, so who are the main characters in Jungle Book? Mowgli, Baloo, Bagheera, and Ka. Isn't that great? Okay, one final thing before moving on to the flask part is if you want to keep track of your spending, for example, uh, uh, let's do this. Let's undo this uh, with uh, get OpenAI callback as CB. What's uh, it? Uh, oh, get OpenAI callback. Did I remove that? get OpenAI callback. Okay, so go ahead and add this uh, get OpenAI callback up here. But if you want to keep track of uh, your spending, all you need to do is uh, just put this in or get OpenAI callback and go ahead and run this. And basically at the end of this, it says, hey, it's two cents or something, you know, whatever, how much ever it did cost. Okay, so uh, I wasn't prepared to show that. So sorry about that. But now let's go ahead and move on to the next part of this exercise, which is, okay, now let's go ahead and create some sort of an application. For that, let's clear everything, okay? Okay, magic, everything's gone. Now let's go ahead and start from scratch. Let me go ahead and delete that file and let's make sure everything is readable for you. Okay, I think that's a decent enough size. Uh, let's go to Flask app. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Oh, that's probably too much. And my PDF processor is something that I am importing. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, 
So let us look at the structure here. So now I am moving out of this basic implementation into Flask app. Flask is a, uh, for at least for beginners, it can be a bit complicated to wrap your head around it because you need a few other uh, files, but it's easy for scaling up your website, you know, if you're trying to do this. So in this case, again, I have my .env where I have my API key and uh, I have, uh, uh, templates where I have my upload.html. So I, uh, I'll i show you what I have in upload.html. Again, this is a HTML file. It doesn't have to be this complicated. I made this this complicated because I want a uh, nice style in the background, but you can delete all of this part and it's uh, the style part, it still works, okay? So the HTML file is basically, <coughs> uh, it's, it's just rendering. Uh, and the back end is going to be our Flask app, right? So in this case, think of uh, your file is just that, okay? And uh, so we are going to have, uh, as I showed you in our initial screenshot, a form where the user can actually upload, click on the upload button, user can upload a file and ask a question based on that file. And in the back end, once the file gets uploaded, it's going to be trained. In this case, let's only do PDF but you can do exactly what i've done in my video first instead of uploading one you can upload like a bunch of files and uh, ask it uh, the questions but in this example i'm doing pdf and then you ask a question and then it uh, gives you a response right there okay and keep an eye on this post again these are all api calls that you can see there and uh, uh, we'll, we'll flip back and forth between our app and uh, and here but i just want to make sure you see this html file that needs to be located under templates and uh, the train files uh, yeah uh, don't worry about this we are going to upload the file anyway so ignore the training files for now so you have the template you have env where you have the api key and then uh, flask app.py and my pdf processor.py let's look at what my pdf processor is this should be exactly same as where we have uh, uh, you know the last time yeah, uh, in fact, uh, the get uh, open AI callback, I deleted that in the last file, but obviously I had it for a reason to keep track of uh, the spending. Okay, so not much different. This is, everything is exactly the same as before. So let's go ahead and understand the code and then go ahead and run it. Okay, so f first of all, what do I have in my PDF? It's got two functions, one that actually reads the PDF file, the other one that processes the PDF file. And of course, dot in, uh, it's loading the, the my API key. So reading is pretty straightforward. It's exactly the read PDF uh, function that we had in our previous document. All it's going to do is read the PDF, put all the text together and return the text to us. And the process PDF is again, very similar to what we had before. So we have our text. We are going to split the characters in text 1000 at a time with an overlap of 200 and then apply that onto our text and uh, OpenAI embeddings, F-A-I-S-S from text, embeddings, define your large language model, go ahead and chain it, and then doc search, similarity search using your query. And where does that query come from? This function, when you call that function. So we need to make sure when we define our Flask, asp, uh, uh, Flask app, that when we call this process PDF function, we are going to provide the query and the PDF path. These two are coming from the user via the HTML interface. But everything else, you see this file should be easy to understand because this is nothing but our previous file, except I put everything in a function, that's it. Okay, finally, moving on to Flask. Uh, again, I hope you watched my, I don't know, regular viewers, you know, a long time ago, I did uh, how to convert uh, your code into an app and uh, I used Flask back then but again here very similar you use requests so you can actually define your post methods and so on <coughs> um, you have render template so let's go ahead and run these and PDF processor from my PDF processor which is this file I'm going to import the PDF query part and that's what we are going to import right there okay now the main part of the flask app again you have your app initialized right here and then uh, app route methods equal to get and post and the route is the basic route so it's not looking at any other uh, so basically that is just looking at your uh, root directory uh, in your html uh, on, on your web page 
Okay, so right there and uh, request method equals to post. If that is the case, if someone posted that request and if file is not in the request files, then go ahead and give an error of no file part in the request. Okay, uh, and uh, if the file is there, then go ahead, no, I mean, it, if the file name is empty, then go ahead and give no file selected and so on. Like when you, when you uh, obviously, you need to tell it what to do if there is no file, if there is a file and so on. So file name is go ahead and get the file name, like file, you get this file from request.files and uh, go ahead and save the file name and go ahead and save the question, right? So the form is providing the question and uh, the, the file upload is giving you the file name. So you have the two things that you need for your process PDF. That's what we are getting from the user and it's return render template so it goes to upload.html and that's the template we just looked at right there and file is file right there and our text is coming from this id called question yeah so let's go back so you can relate to that so from the form you're getting the question and from the files you're getting the file right there so that's that's pretty much it and uh, yeah that's how we can go ahead and run this app and let's let's run the app and see what happens okay of course, this is a website, so that means it needs to be hosted somewhere. So it's hosted right there and go ahead, copy. Now, let me paste it in the browser. Okay, let's paste it here and see what happens. There you go. Upload PDF and ask a question. So select a PDF file. Now I want to make sure I open this so you can see exactly what's going on. Okay, so where is this coming from? Like upload PDF, ask a question, select a PDF file. I think these are basics for most of you, but of course that's something we defined as part of our uh, upload.html. Uh, so it should be somewhere up here. Oh God, I, I can't see, yeah. Title is the PDF query, container, yeah. Upload PDF and ask a question, right? So all of this stuff is coming from here. It's the backend stuff that's coming from Flask app and uh, the other Python file. So select a PDF file, choose file, yeah? So let's go back to the code one more time, sorry guys. Select a PDF file, yeah? And when I choose the file, it's going to be ID file right there. So let's go ahead and choose the file. Okay, let's uh, let's choose the, the jungle book. Okay, let's open it. Okay, so that part is done. Now we need to type a question. So when we type a question and hit submit, we are providing it the information about the question and submit is submit, right? So that's what going on there. So uh, what question do we have? Uh, okay, who is Mowgli? Let's ask a different question this time. Who is Mowgli? Submit. Okay, so there you go, the response. It took a few seconds uh, now the, because it needs to train on this document. The best way to code this is you train on the document once, but then you can ask questions multiple times. Yeah, that's how you normally design it. Obviously, I didn't do that. So Mowgli is a boy who was adopted into, I don't know, Sioni Wolfpack for the price of a bull and on Balu's good word. Okay, that is amazing. What if I ask it uh, another question? So, uh, what question shall we ask? Uh, okay, let's ask a kind of uh, elaborate question. No file selected. So I wanted to show you that, but I don't know why I wasted my time typing this entire question. What is Balu's role in the jungle book? That's because there is no file selected. So you should actually uh, not do this. You should actually separate that component with uh, from this component. So you can train it once and ask multiple questions. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, of course we got our answer. Balu is the teacher of the law and the old and sometimes very foolish teacher of the law and the Sioni wolf cubs. He teaches Mowgli the wood and water loss and blah, 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 and all that stuff. Okay. So you got the point. Uh, now let's go ahead and see how we can do it the other way using Streamlit, which is uh, much easier than Flask actually. Easy to understand than Flask. Okay, so let us uh, kill this upload.html, flask.app, my yeah, PDF processor. I'm gonna leave my PDF processor right there for the moment and let's jump to Streamlit app, okay? Uh, 
Okay, so what shall we do now? Uh, actually, let's not use my PDF processor. I wanted to, I forgot that I included everything in one file. Uh, oh, I didn't kill this process there. Okay, let's kill this and clean the screen. Okay, I think we are all good to move on to this one. Okay, now you will see that all of these, again, identical, except for the streamlit part. And in this file, in this directory, I only have my streamlit app and .n, nothing else, and the book I want to upload, nothing else. It's that easy. Streamlit makes this process that easy. So how does the, the uh, function look like, main function? Okay, so load dot env right there because we need to get our api key and page configuration what do you want to call the page chat pdf i called it and the header is chat pdf and uh, pdf equals to what our streamlit file uploader go ahead and upload the file that's how easy it is basically to define what your pdf is going to be if there is no pdf file then uh, go ahead and put the text there. So for page in PDF, if there is a file, then, uh, oh, sorry, if PDF is not none, that means if PDF exists, go ahead and do this, right? So uh, for each page, go ahead and concatenate the text. This is very similar to how we concatenated the text from PDF. We read the text from PDF in the previous file, uh, exactly what we are trying to do here. And this line is the same, that line is the same. You should recognize that. Yeah, we are separating these and we are dividing them into chunks. We have embeddings there. We are creating a doc search right here and we are defining a large language model and we are chaining it together using LLM and we are asking a query. And where does the query come from? From the user. So we say type your question and st.text input. Streamlit actually knows that, hey, this is a text input file and this is where it's coming from and it you directly assign it to query. So Streamlit makes it this web programming more like Python coding rather than web coding. In Flask, you see how we kind of played with HTML and we kind of created this API type of interface between our uh, you know, app and the HTML and HTML is the client kind of pulling in information from this. So if you don't want all that kind of uh, complexity, then Streamlit is amazing. You see how sd.fileuploader, it knows hey, I need to create a, a file uploader bar where the user can click on the browse and then upload something or drag the files and do something. To do that using our Flask, it can be a bit more involved. That's that's it. And uh, header, it actually puts. So once you import the streamlet, I, I get constantly amazed by how easy it actually makes this web development. Anyway, uh, so, so there you go. And the query is coming from the text input. And if the query exists, then your doc search, go ahead and do the doc search and go ahead and provide the response. And what to do with the response? Write it on the screen. So st.write actually writes it on the screen. You're done. This is your app. And when I run it, it will come up with a message, I think, that, hey, go ahead and, and, and type streamlit something, something somewhere. We should actually run this app <coughs> using streamlit run and whatever the Python uh, file is. Okay, for that, let's open the console and uh, continue the process. Okay, so I already have this, uh, this Anaconda prompt. I'm in the right uh, right uh, environment right there, our custom chat, and I'm at the right location right here. So I don't need to provide an extensive path to this. So what do we do? S-T-R-E-A-M, streamlit, run. And what is our app called? S-T-R, streamlit, app.py, and let's go ahead and run it. It should actually automatically open my default browser with that address. And uh, we should see that any second. So there you go chat PDF with this uh, symbol right there, upload your PDF file. Now let's drag and drop the PDF file, yeah? And let's go back to the code to have a quick look at it. So uploader, and if PDF is not, not none, that means if there is something, then go ahead and do the uh, following thing, right? So right now there is nothing, it's none. So I don't see anything down here. Let's go ahead and upload a file right now. Junglebook.pdf, let's do that. It's not going anywhere into the cloud or anything. This is just local, yeah? So all your files are safe with you. 
Okay, so now that we have it, it says it's running up there. So now it's actually training on this document. And once it's done, once it's done, because let's go back to the code. So it's uh, if it's not none, go ahead and do this, do this character chunk. So it was doing all of that. That's why it was showing running up there. And now it shows the input right here. So after all of that, it shows the input bar. That's why it says type the question, okay, after this. So now we can go ahead and type our question. I'm running out of questions here. Let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, what shall we ask? Uh, well, I'm asking as if you know what to do. Let's do the same question, okay? So who are the main three characters in Jungle Book? Okay, so let's ask this question. And what it's doing, you see how it says it's running up here. That basically is this step. If query, then go ahead and do doc similarity search. Go ahead and run. And then once the response is there, it go ahead and uh, it actually writes it on the screen. And it's not there yet. It's still running. And we should see it any second. The three main characters in Jungle Book are Mowgli, Baloo, and Bagheera. Okay, so there you go. So now you can see how easy it is to actually train your own models. Of course, I spent some money, uh, I guess, doing this stuff. And uh, let's go back. Uh, let's go back to where was that in uh, Flask app right there. So you see, oh, sorry, my PDF processor, that line. Let's go ahead and actually see uh, because it, it kills me if I don't show you that thing. <laughs> Uh, how to keep track because that's important right guys I mean when you are running these type of things keeping track of money is very important so I shouldn't have deleted that line from here let's go ahead and include it and now let's go ahead and oh, sorry uh, ta -da -ta 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 -ta, undo this and run this whole thing and end the video by staring at how much we just spent and uh, I hope you I hope you found this to be useful. And let me know if you want to learn more about these language models. I'm learning it constantly, so I uh, so I can actually uh, you know uh, share my knowledge here. It says retrying because it's probably uh, because this thing is still running. This thing is still running there. Yeah, I need to close this. I need to close this and I need to run this again. Uh, maybe I'm not allowed to do multiple uh, API calls. I don't know. <laughs> That's just a thought. Okay, so yeah, there you go. Uh, I think, yeah, I'm allowed to do one API call at a time and that probably was the issue there. So with this line uh, down here, uh, you can see the total cost was like almost three cents for for this call so we made i don't know four or five six calls so i probably spent like uh, i don't know nine to ten cents for this tutorial and if you are feeling generous just click that thanks button so uh, so at least you support <laughs> my 10 cents here okay guys thank you very much and uh, let's meet again in the next tutorial and until then keep learning